Hey, coaches and everybody else, welcome back to episode 25 of Football Talk with Coach Chip right here on the Coach Chip channel on YouTube. And I don't even know what day it is of our coronavi uh, coronavirus hiatus, the corona hiatus. But I know this, coaches are blowing up social media in a good way, talking a lot of ball, getting, uh, getting smarter. Uh, learning how to do things. I'll tell you what I learned how to do yesterday. I learned how to Zoom. Uh, the DC, the head coach and I over at Manchester High School got together yesterday and did two or three Zooms. They were just test runs. And I uh, hope they destroyed the recording of those Zooms because that would be pretty funny, uh, especially to our younger friends, the younger coaches, and just younger people in general, and probably a lot of okay boomers going on, even though technically uh, the other two aren't boomers yet. They're just a little bit older of that Generation X that are not exactly techno-savvy like old Coach Chip here is. Well, today we're going to talk about episode 25, something I've been seeing a lot of on social media and a lot of questions, a lot of answers. I believe you me, the answers I'm going to give you today aren't the number one answers, but buck sweep. And so I got to thinking about it, went back and found some video of uh, some of the ways we've done it recently. Uh, couldn't find some video of ways we've done it. It goes way back and pretty much any formation I'm going to give you today, you can probably do it out of under center too. I got a lot of under center guys that have been asking me questions about what's going on uh, with the buck sweep and how they run it. All right, this is the most common way I run it right here. And I'm going to show you an adjustment off that in a little bit. But this is our slot right formation. Slot puts the Z on the left in the slot and right puts the H in the wing. Now, on the first one, I'm going to go through all the blocking, and I know most of y'all know exactly what we're doing already, but I'm going to go through it just for those that don't. And we do have some non-coaches out there. And I'm going to work from right to left. All right, the Y is going to do what I call a runoff stalk. Going to bust off the line like he's running a route, and then when the corner starts to pat down, then he'll pat down, try to get inside on this one because we're running it in here. We're not running a jet out here and cut that corner off from falling back inside and making a tackle. All right, next up, the H, gap down backer. First man inside of you. It's almost always going to be in this formation, that five technique right there, that DN, M loss, end man on line of scrimmage. The right tackle, play side tackle, gap down backer. I have done it where we just tell him uh, first D lineman inside and have him go all the way down to get an A-gap guy to help the center who's trying to reach him for teams that try to be dirty and run an under front. It was, I was telling uh, our defensive coordinator yesterday that those guys are evil. They're always trying to find ways to mess up a brother. The center has got A-gap defender, A-gap D-lineman, always. If he's right here, reach him. If he's back over here, block back. If he's in a zero, reach him. A gap D lineman. All right, unless you're going to pull him. And I have done that in practice. We've never been able to do it in a game or never had the opportunity to do it. Preparing, we've practiced it. It's the only guy that we don't skip pull with. Okay. And uh, you can pull him. Yeah. And I've also, I have pulled the tackle before against under front. Let the guard stay home, pull the tackle, and let him go out and kick. And I got that idea from the way we blocked the rocket toss back in the day. All right, and the backside tackle is going to gap flip or gap hinge and not let that nine, that five technique scrape down inside and catch the play right in here because we let him have a free run down the backside of the line. All right, to the pullers. Play side guard. Going to skip pull and get depth immediately. I actually teach him to push back and get off that line just in case that three technique is a dude and he kind of gets a little push right here, a little penetration by pushing our tackle back. If he'll push and get depth and get around that cone that we use in our buck sweep drill and then get downhill and kick the force player, in this case, this dog right here. I call outside linebackers dogs. All right, the backside guard is going to skip pull flat, Stay flat right behind the center. Get a little depth for the same reason in case that's a dude right there and he gets a little pushback on your center. 
come flat until you clear the midline. What's the midline? The butt pad of the center, or where it was before we blocked back. Skip pull flat, then get your depth around your cone that you put about a, two feet deeper than the front side guard's cone. That's about two feet behind the tackle's feet, and then about two more feet. Get around that cone that keeps him away from getting caught up. Then get downhill, eyes inside. Get downhill, find the last down block. Find the last down block. If you're one of those teams that likes putting it up, putting the guy up on the line, like a Y, tight end, he's finding the tight end's down block. And the way to do it is practice, practice, practice. When you're doing your, your buck sweep drill with just your guards, have you a bag there? Sometimes I just stand there. I, I kind of estimate where it is, and I'll stand there, and I say, get around me. I said, I'm the down block. And get right here, eyes inside, looking for that scraping backer. For some reason, the backer doesn't show up, got caught up in here. Keep going, keep moving, be a touchdown block on the free safety that my big head is blocking right there. Okay? Never stop moving. Don't get in there because the backer didn't show up, okay? And just stop and be like, what do we do now? And then I've actually seen that happen before, and it's not cool. And that guy runs into him because he's trying to avoid defenders. He's not thinking about avoiding his own blocker. All right, on the back side, the RPO. All right, the Z, as we call him, the slot guy, number two, is going to run. Some folks call it a slant. I always call it a slant. This is how we ran what we call a diamond slant. Release outside about a 45. It's not quite a 45-degree angle. And on your fourth step, push back inside. Now, that angle will vary based on where the dog lines up on you and also what the wheel does, okay? But now, most folks now I've learned call it a glance to separate it from the, the, the slant. And I like that. So I can quit calling it a diamond slant and Anytime we just want to run this kind of slant, we'll just say, hey, run a glance. And you're going to cut on your fourth step. So what you want is your inside foot back. So your first step, <coughs> excuse me, your first step is with your outside foot. So your, excuse me, I said that wrong. You want your inside foot back. So you'll step. And so your fourth step is with your outside foot. Again, let me get myself right. Inside foot back. Step with your inside foot first, right here. All right, so now your first and third step will be with your inside foot. Your second and fourth step will be with your outside foot. Push off that fourth step and come right in here, okay? And, of course, the quarterback's read is the will. If the wheel chases pulling guard, whether he's coming hard right here or scraping flat, if he disappears, even if he blitzes, if he disappears, disconnect and hum right there to that Z. All right, right here on the, also on the back side, you can run a lot of things. I've seen different people do it. I've done the snag, kind of like a slant sit. <clears throat> We've done the uh, hitch. This one's doing an under. How do you do it? Some folks just run a run another glance behind it or another slant behind it. And so they'll be at different levels and they'll be timed up. When they get here, they'll, he'll be here, the Z will be here, and the X will be here. How do you do it? Tell me. Siegel.chip at gmail.com. Okay, Coach Chip on Facebook, Chip Siegel on Twitter, at Chip Siegel on Twitter. So that's everybody up front. All right, in the backfield. The quarterback is reading the wheel from jump. He's looking at the wheel. All right, so I'm the quarterback. <clears throat> I get the snap. Boom. I'm going to go right here. Stick the ball out. Belt buckle high. He got the same height every time. About to tell you why. Stick it out in my head. I'm looking at the wheel right there. Okay? Do a little shuffle, shuffle, and then throw the Throw the glance. All right, the reason why he wants to stick it out at the same height every time, belt buckle extended, is what we tell him. That's the coaching point. Is the running back, we call him a, a tailback, is responsible for the mesh. 
because I do not want the quarterback looking at the pocket made by the tailback. He, he cannot find the tailback's pocket and read the wheel at the same time. Y'all follow what I'm saying to you? So he's going to stick it out, and his eyes are looking at the wheel. The tailback's responsible for the mesh, and we do it every day. We do mesh drill every day. Sometimes we do it flat. And by the way, it's the same mesh you'll do on the upside down uh, veer, as some people call it, the power read, the sweet power read. It's the same mesh, okay, for the running back and the quarterback. So you can do, and some days we'll do the downhill, like we're doing a uh, power or zone. Some days we do the flat mesh. But we're going to mesh every day. There's going to be a five-minute mesh period between the quarterback and the running back every day. Okay, some folks say, Coach, we're going to do it every day. I said, just on the days we eat. Just on the days we eat. It's like people ask me, Coach, do you run every day? I said, just on the days that I eat. The tailback is going to come right here. And what we do, I use the old school veer rule. If that ball is still in the running back's pocket, when he clears the quarterback's far hip, okay, keep it. He just made the quarterback just made his decision by not making a decision. In government, we call that a pocket veto. You just stuck it in your pocket and left it there. Well, it becomes law. Okay, I mean it, it gets knocked out. You lose it. You lose the law. Same thing. You're gonna lose the ball to the running back if you leave it in there too long. Okay, so we tell them if that thing's still in there when you clear that quarterback's hip. It's yours. If you go back and look at old film and see when the dive back and the quarterback get hung up in the old days running wishbone and split back veer, 90% of the time it's quarterback's fault because he left it in there too long. And he keeps it. going to come right here when you do your buck drill, have your cone outside your H or outside your widest down block. Make a 90-degree cut right there. Or look into score. Look into score. And that's where you get your kick out right here and then you get your, turn, your wrap right there. Oh, we got a little video of the buck ride out of that right there. Now, on that one, it was a couple of years ago, and we and we got that formation coming up in a little bit where we got the, the Y is out there flex, and he's going to block down as well. But I wanted you to see how we blocked it. And he's in tight, and we got away from that. But I think we're going to go back to it. You can see what I just showed you? There it is right there. All right, the next buck I want to show you is a trips buck. Some people put that H up on the line and put the Y back off, or they put the Y in here tight and the H is out here and the Z is out here off. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it's going to be the same effect, okay? Excuse me. All right, every, I'm not going to go through all the blocking again. <clears throat> Just the different RPOs off of it. Now, when we first started running the trips, we always ran it out here wider. But then we learned the RPO game. And by the way, this is a front side read, so we're going to read the force guy. F for front, F for force. And it's the same thing. All the blocking is the same. The tailback is going to mesh up with the quarterback in the same way. But this time, when the quarterback extends the football, belt buckle high, his eyes are out here on the force, the dog, as I call him. And this, the Z is not running the glance. The Y is running the glance. Instead of number two glancing, number one is glancing on the front side. This is the way we do it. I want to hear how y'all do it too. Remember, Siegel.chip at gmail.com. Coach Chip on Facebook, at Chip Siegel on Twitter. Love to hear from you. What we've done is bubble here. Get it back from the old uh, slant bubble concept out of the quick game. Or an arrow. Get no deeper than five. And then you can do several reasons to do that. You maybe get that dog to come here and open up that window, okay? Or get that dog to come here. If, for instance, you got a signal where you tell the quarterback, give it no matter what. We don't want to RPO this. Okay, there's times in the game you do not want to throw the football. We all know that. You're in your four-minute offense trying to run the clock. You don't want to take a chance on an incomplete ball. Okay, or you're just blocking the snot out of buck. You know, and you found something over there you like and you want to keep running it. Give him that signal or that keyword that says give it no matter what. 
Well, this right here may get that dog to widen a little bit and makes an even, ooh, that's a sweet kick right there. That's a sweet little kick out for that front side guard. Backside guard still finding that last down block, scraping paint off of that, getting tight to it, eyes inside, looking for that scraping mic. So this is the same play, different formation, different RPO. It's a front side RPO, so you're reading the force player to the play side. Now here you see our trips. Move myself out of the way. Okay, now this is pre-RPO. This is three years ago. You see how wide it hits? And that's where we discovered the glory of that RPO to the trips. All right, here's another example of it. Again, pre-RPO. See, it hits a little bit wider, and it's more of a true sweep instead of a buck, but it's blocked the same way. Now, this way of running the buck, some of y'all right now are looking at the diagram going like, that ain't buck, that's jet. No, it's buck. Look how we're blocking that joker. Okay, we line up in basically the same formation I showed you to begin with, a slot right, but this time we have the tail back over here. Now, you can keep him back over here if you want to just keep the same formation. And after you run it, you got the op you got the potential of option back over here. And we've done that before, okay, off the jet. But this is for teams that like boxing the jet, like having that, they see in that jet motion and having that dog run up here, the force guy run up here and try to cut the jet off. So we got the smart idea about three years ago or so. Why don't we run jet, tell the, the jetter don't go quite as fast. And when he gets the ball, He's going to stick it in the ground right here and run buck. And we call it Z buck because it's the Z running the buck. And I'm not going to go over the blocking again. I'll tell you the tailback is going to jab fake and then come back underneath. And we've got a counter, a T counter off of this look that we run as well with the G and the H. But this is a great way to run buck. Uh, years ago, some folks called this uh, red light jet where our, our stop sign jet come right here and go and go cut right there and get vertical. And this is another great way of doing it. Now on the back side, we've never RPO'd this. So I'm not even going to, I'm just saying you could do this back here. Um, pre, just like you do on the jet where you pre-snap it. If there's nobody in the flat, just fake it to the Z, raise up, hit him on the slant or the glance, ever how you want to teach it or an under or a hitch or whatever. If they're playing way off and there's nobody in the flat, take it. They're giving you that gift. You can take it. You, again, you tell me, Siegel.chip at gmail.com, at Chip Siegel on Twitter, or Coach Chip on Facebook. Love to hear from you. And you tell me what you do. I mean, after all, you got the time, right? Yeah. So, same play. And how I, you say, well, how does the Z find time to do it? Just maybe one day a week. And you know on the film, oh, this is going to be a good week to do that. This team's going to come up and they're going to, try to box the jet. And so let him just spend some time with the running back coach instead of the wide receiver coach working on the jet, I mean the buck drill, hitting the cone and getting vertical. All right, now here's the Z buck. He's not going quite as fast. So you got two guards pulling, that number 80 scraping out there trying to stop the jet. See, a lot of them just took themselves out of it because they're so intent on stopping jet. Look how many of them whites, white helmets are moving. And it helps if you got a kid like number two right there who's like an old school doctor back in the day willing to make a house call. Okay. Now, this buck here is just plain buck. It says buck right, but it's buck left. I didn't change the card, but I drew it up to the left. The X is flexed. Okay, remember, don't pay attention to that. There, I fixed it. All right. The same blocking up front, just doing it to the left. Got the same read on the backside. You got the glance from number two. 
What's different then, coach? We moved X in, and he is going to crack. And you see, now, if that guy is playing off, see the dog's off a piece right here? Push up field a couple of steps or three. And then when he commits to come up, he goes, oh, I'm going to make a tackle on the buck. You come in and you cream his butt. Now, if he's all the way, if he's up, and if you do that, he's going to beat you inside, then you'll do a straight line right to him. Okay, just block down on him. Now, you can do this if you've got physical wide receivers. You can do this uh, on occasion if you just want to put an H or a tight end type of kid in there and tell him to block down on that guy and cream him. That's good stuff. This is great into the boundary. Okay, just cheat him in right there and crack him. We got away from it because the crack rules got so cockeyed picky about it. And instead of just taking a chance of getting the play call back, we just started widening the guy out and stalking him. But I'm thinking we're going to go back to it now that the rule's been in effect for a while. But we had in recent time where a guy, a running back, would catch, not a running back, a lineman would catch a linebacker or a DB on a peel back and just put his hands out and push him. Because the guy's not looking and he's smaller than the lineman, the guy goes ends up on his uh, backside and first thing hit the ground is the back of his helmet. And the referee just sees that and sees our guy standing over him and throws a flag for uh, hitting the defenseless player. But um, now that it's, it's in and they're not as, you know how it is with a new rule, they're going to call it. So uh, we're thinking about going back to that this year. All right, here you see he's cheated in. Pushed up a step, and then boom, right there. That was sweet, wasn't it? You gotta love stuff like that. Maybe it should have been called, I don't know. Looked like kind of clotheslined him, didn't he? Now notice how deep he is. That backer right there, it could be a safety cheated up. I'm not sure. He's going to take a step up, okay, which gets this guy pushed back a little bit. That's good because it helps with the, the kick out from the guard. And then he's going to come in right here and crack him. Right here. You see that? All right. Now, if this kid was way up, like in here, you have to coach him up to go straight in there and get him. Because if he doesn't, he'll come up the field right here. And you wind up the guard to have to kick him, and the thing runs a little bit too tight. Y'all see what I'm talking about? So that's good. That's good stuff. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is bunch. And we have not done this, I do not believe. I, I couldn't find it except under center way back in 12, 13. We called it grapes and lemons. Grape was bunch right, lemons was bunch left. And again, I'm not going to go over all the blocking with you except on the outside. In this case, we're using our H, our Y, and our Z. And they're both just going to block the first thing inside of them. Z is going to crack right here. And one of the reasons we kind of got away from it, we went away from having more physical kind of kids when we went to the, the gun, to more wide receiver, scat back type kids. But he's going to come in here and crack first man. Okay, Y is going to come in here and block that backer. And this is, if they don't adjust really good on this, you you got them outnumbered. H is going to do what he always does. And everybody else is blocking it the same. Now, here's what I like about it. Again, talking about the old wing T mentality of putting people in conflict or putting them in a bind. There's more ways of putting them in a bind than using their technique against them. And here's what I mean by that. All right. What do linebackers spend most of their time doing in practice? Tackling and plugging, right? Tackling and plugging and shedding blocks, and that's all their drills. All right, what do these guys spend most of their time doing in practice? That's right, defending passes, okay? You know, doing one-on-ones, practicing their drops, da -da 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 -da, all the things DBs do. Now you're making his butt be force. And unless their DC is going to take that dog and put him out here, but now he's taking the dog and potentially putting him on a Z. And most, my Zs are going to be better athletes than most people's outside linebackers. Usually. You know, you can't control that, but usually. Because that's supposed to be one of your best athletes on the field right here. Now you're putting him on that dog. Now he's got to cover this cat in the open field. 
I don't think so. So most of them, what their adjustment's going to be is the corners out here, but what happens now, corner becomes force. And I know a lineman's dream is to score a touchdown, but somewhere in that list of dreams, linemen dream about getting one-on-one -on -one kickouts on little old 165-pound cornerbacks. And, dude, let me tell you, you know, we always joke on film that we're looking for the superintendent's son or the booster club president's son. Nothing against superintendents or booster club presidents. But that kid that's just out there and they're trying to hide him, and we figure out who he is and how they're trying to hide him, sometimes we'll shift into that right there and get that joker one-on-one, -on -one, and now we're getting a kick-out block on a kid that's not used to being kicked on, okay, and a kid that's not used to making tackles, okay especially not used to having some guard who specializes in kickout blocks, who's repped it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. How many times is that cornerback repped being kicked by a lineman? Not many. Okay, and you run it just the way you always run it. And you can, RP, like I said, we haven't run it since the under center days. You can RPO on the back side, I reckon, right here. Okay, and I don't know who you'd read. You know, if that guy's cheated down inside – like this, because they're adjusted. Because I don't know how they're going to line up to it, to be honest with you. Okay? Depending on the, you'd have to look at the film and look at the defense. All right, we're coming past the 26-minute mark. Going to get close to 30 minutes on this one. But this was a several days of thinking about it. Went into this, and I, I don't know, and I get wordy. But I haven't done this in years. But this is cool stuff, and it's great to do this coming out of a timeout or to start a drive. And there's all kind of things you can do off of it. This is base right up, empty, Y over, Q buck right. And you say, golly, coach, that's so wordy. Remember, it's on the wristband. And it's not, you know, the quarterback doesn't have to say all that. And the coach has got it written down on his call sheet and all this kind of stuff. It's just fake the jet. And we've done this and with uh, a lot, but not with all this crazy formation. Fake the jet. And if you've got an athletic quarterback like we've had the last six years, Two different kids, you run buck right with the Q. Okay? You run buck right with the Q. Uh, we scored uh, second play of the game last year in the playoffs on the Q buck off the, the jet fake. And so you go trips over here with a Y over. So they got a play over here. Okay? And you got kind of a twins over here. And then you motion jet. Well, if you're a jet team, okay, like we are. They got to respect that. I have no clue how they're going to line up. I called a buddy of mine and said, "How would you line up to this?" And this is what you know. He said, "I don't know. That's what I think I do. Fake that jet and tell them to make a good fake, not a flash fake. Stick it in there, shuffle, shuffle, stick it in the ground, then come back because that lets the, line, the 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 blocking get there, times it up. Don't just catch it and take off, or you're going to beat your your backside guard to the point of attack." Okay, and again, look what we got, folks. We got a little cornerback out here. We put him in a bind again because now he's forced. Because when this jet goes, he'll he'll bump in a little bit right here, and you'll get the kick somewhere in here. Okay? And so those are just several ways that you can run the buck sweep. And your imagination is the only thing that limits you. You can buck as long as you've got the down blocks on the play side. You can run buck out of almost any formation. Play with it. What do you come up with? I want to see your answers. Draw it up. Give me a screenshot. Send it to me at, at seagle.chip, S-E-A-G-L-E, at gmail.com, seagle.chip at gmail.com, uh, chips, at Chip Siegel on Twitter, and on Facebook, I got a Coach Chip page that I'm slowly converting over to be nothing but uh, tied to this youtube channel okay and all football stuff all right well until next time y'all stay safe keep your social distance and as always be elite